What's up, gang? You want to learn about non-renewable energy, such as coal, oil, and natural gas? Well, if you do, and I don't think you have much of a choice, but you came to the right place. This lecture is going to focus on the formation of coal. So you ready to go? Let's get cracking at this, huh? What do you say? You plug something into an outlet. How does it get powered? Did you ever think about that? Where, are, where does our energy come from? So I want you to begin with the sun in mind, and I want you to think about it for a second. How, how what form, what, what makes our energy? How do we get our energy? Guaranteed, if you pulled 10 random people on 19, 9 out of 10 wouldn't be able to tell you. That's kind of sad. However, it's, it's reality. So think about this. 300 plus million years ago, the earth was covered in vegetation, thick vegetation, trees. I mean, it was green and lush and probably very beautiful. The sun powered that. The sun powers life. These trees use the sun for photosynthesis. These plants use the sun and then they die. In some situations, when they fall to the earth, they might fall into a swamp or a bog or some kind of mud pit. And that mud encases the, the actual plant. And instead of decomposing, it sort of forces the oxygen out. And if there's no oxygen, then there's no decomposers. Therefore, the plant gets preserved. The biomass, the carbon gets preserved. Then over millions of years, soil kind of compacts it. And then over a long period of time, it's so compacted that it turns into a, a hard substance like coal. Humans go and extract that coal. They ship it off to market to a coal burning power plant. The coal is crushed into small little pieces. It's fed into a furnace. The coal is burning at really high temperatures. And the, these little pipes that go through the furnace that contain water, that water gets heated up to turn to steam. And that steam flows through with such high velocities through a, a turbine, which spins a generator and creates electricity. Well, that energy is then is moved from the power plant to your home through high voltage power lines. And then lo and behold, when you plug an electric vehicle into the wall, you, know, you don't even realize it. You just plug it in. All right, it's charged. Way to go. But that is how and where we get our energy from. So a long, long, long time ago, like I just mentioned, the earth was covered in swamps and vegetation. And, and that vegetation died and fell to the ground. And that vegetation, more layers of soil just compacted the dead plants. And another layer and another layer. And then eventually all this rock and dirt, this large layer of rock and dirt on top of the dead plants that converted the dead plants to, to coal. And that coal is then mined out of the ground, which, again, is used for power. Now, it's, it's not forming coal right away. It's, it's forming peat. Peat is the precursor of coal. And you, you really wouldn't want to burn peat because it's mostly water and not really heavy in carbon content. So as more heat and pressure is being applied to peat, that peat then converts to the first stage of coal, which is called lignite. Lignite, and by the way, this minus and plus stand for a couple things. First off, it stands for the least amount of carbon to the most amount of carbon. And then secondly, it stands for closest to the surface to the deepest inside the, sur the Earth's surface. So lignite is the closest to the surface and it has the least amount of carbon. So if a coal burning power plant were to use lignite, you'd have to use a lot of lignite to produce the same amount of energy that an anthracite would produce. But give lignite more time being exposed to that heat and pressure, then it's converted to bituminous. And what I mean by converted, it's the, the, the water vapor sort of, or the water is squeezed out. So that means the percentage of carbon is higher now. So this is actually the most commonly used type of coal. It's highly abundant. It's fairly, it's not too deep in the earth. That means that the amount of money that the coal burning power plants need to put into the system is a little bit less because you don't have to dig as deep as let's just say anthracite. It has a high amount of carbon content where it produces a lot of heat. So it, it's a good bang for your buck. Now I'll give bituminous more time in the earth to be exposed to more additional layers of soil on top of it, squeezing more impurities out such as the water. Now the carbon content is a lot higher. It's, it's really hard compared to bituminous and lignite. But it, the problem with anthracite, it's deeper within the earth. 
So now these coal burning power plants have to spend more money in the operational cost of digging it out of the ground because it's deeper. However, you have to outweigh those costs with the fact that it has the highest amount of, of carbon and maybe it produces more energy. So compare the upfront cost to what you're going to make. Uh, this, this picture is just another example of giving peat more time and pressure underneath the earth's surface of layers upon layer being built and then it turns to lignite which then turns to bituminous and then anthracite. Heat and pressure. That's all it takes. It's peat. Look at peat. How mushy it is. Mushy, mushy, mushy. And that is a lot. I mean that's a very high in concentration of water. So imagine burning that. You're just burning the water away and then you're left with a itty little bitty amount of carbon produces very low heat. Low heat. But then give peat more time in the ground to be exposed to pressure in heat, it could harden and form lignite. Now, I use harden loosely because you could pull apart lignite and just scrape with your fingernail and it'll, it'll break apart. Kind of shows that a lot of it's still high in water content and low in carbon content, although it is officially the first type of coal. It's the closest to the surface. Kind of makes sense. But add more years and years and years of being baked uh, underneath the earth's surface, so to speak, of layer upon layer of new additional soil compacting it, and now it's bituminous. And the amount of water, the water content decreased and the carbon content increased. And like I mentioned, that this is the most commonly used type of coal, because it's easy to get to, and it does give you a good bang for your buck. And lastly, bituminous is the hardest type. It has the, the highest amount of carbon the highest amount of carbon, meaning it burns more completely, it burns hotter, it burns more efficiently. So here again, this is just another picture to explain the same thing. This is the amount of moisture and the amount of the red arrows amount of carbon. And notice peat is, has the highest amount of moisture and the lowest amount of carbon. And then add heat and pressure to it, lignite, bituminous, and then finally, we have anthracite, a little itty bitty amount of moisture and a lot of carbon, the most bang for your buck. The problem with anthracite is it's deep in the ground and it's hard to get to sometimes. So research shows, at least what I've found, that the when you analyze your electric bill, your electricity is given to you how much your power, kilowatt hours. Well, really it boils down to on average one pound is burned to create a kilowatt hour for you but that is an average because there are different types of coal so think about this which type of coal lignite bituminous or anthracite would you need the most amount of coal to burn to make one kilowatt hour and you probably guessed it right it is lignite because it has the least amount of carbon you need the most of it so, or I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. You need more than one pound to make a kilowatt hour. And if I were to ask you the opposite, which type of, which three, or which type of coal would you need the least amount to produce one kilowatt hour? And it is, it is anthracite. It has the highest amount of carbon, anthracite does. Sorry, my handwriting's messy. And because it has the highest amount of carbon and the least amount of, of water, then like I mentioned, it's more efficient, it burns hotter, so you need less than a pound of coal to create a kilowatt hour. But if you add all three of these together, the, the answer is a pound of coal. So I hope you understand how coal formed and the different grades of coal and what causes these, what, what can change lignite to bituminous into anthracite. So, all right, peace out, Mavic Man.